Hello everyone, Tim Brown. Welcome back to my Apple Podcast. You may already know this, but I am a big fan of collage apps, especially collage apps for iOS, specifically the iPad. There's just there are just so many options out there. Uh, there are so many things that you can do. The quality of the applications are amazing, and they are affordable. And you may have discovered, even with other types of applications, it's hard to find a comparable app for the Mac. One, the Mac computer is different. It's it's an entirely different interface. It's a different screen size, a different user interface. It's hard to find an app that equals the experience on the iPad. And I think all of you would agree with that. And the same can be applied to collage apps. It's just hard to find a collage app that can match the ease of use and the experience that you have on the iPad. And it's definitely hard to beat the price. However, we do use Macs, those of us who have Macs anyway, and we do want to find something comparable to that experience for those of us who like Macs. Uh, We do get the benefit of having a larger screen size and and that's helpful. Likewise, because of that, you're going to wind up having to pay just a little bit more. I've had a hard time finding collage applications that work really well on the desktop for me. And I've also had a hard time finding collage applications that can work with older operating systems. For example, my main computer still, to this day, is my old MacBook Pro, still using a 32-bit processor, running Snow Leopard. And if you're like me, you probably are, you're probably running into the same problem where you just cannot find enough applications in the App Store that can run on your operating system. And I know that's the downside of having an old operating system, but for those of us who are just not ready or can afford to move up, in my case, it's nice to know what those options are for us, as well as for those with the latest operating system. And I found a collage app that works well for me. It's called CFX Collage. And this is what it looks like in the App Store, and they're currently offering it for $19.99. Let's go ahead and take a look at the features. So I'm going to go ahead and open CFX Collage. You see here you're greeted with an intro menu telling you about the application. Now you click Start Using Collage to begin, and immediately you're, you're given a collage template by default. I usually begin right away by just getting rid of this frame and just going and picking a new one. But before I do that, let's just go over the features. At the top left, you have the option to save. You can choose a template by clicking on the template icon. And when you go into this menu, here you can change the pixel dimension of your collage. Give your collage a name, of course. Choose the type of paper that you're setting your collage up for. And this helps you too with dimensions. You can also set up your collage to coincide with a device. So in this case, I'm just going to choose the larger dimension for HD. And then on the right here are the available templates. And you can scroll through and decide which one you want to use. So I'm going to go ahead and just choose this one. Okay, because of the resolution size here, it actually extends the size of my screen. So I'm going to do a command minus sign and bring this down to scale so I can actually see it. Before I begin, though, let me just continue going through all the other features just so you can see what's on the menu up above. You can see there's an export option. That's how you save your project when you're done. I'm going to do that later. You can pre- you can preview your collage anytime. You can email, send to Flickr. You can even add your collage to your desktop. And you have a max crop, max all tool. You can rotate pictures left to right. You can rotate them horizontally and vertically. You can uh, choose the option to view uh, guides. You can choose to have a frame or not have a frame. You can, and 
You can add or modify or customize the color of the frame. You can randomize photos. You can choose different layouts. You can clear away certain items. And then finally, you can add themes to your collage. So let's work through some of these features. I'm going to go ahead and import some images into my project. And there are different ways that you can do this. You can go to image and then import images like so. Or if you want to make it easier for yourself, import for some reason isn't an icon that is placed on the toolbar by default. So you can actually add it very easily by going to customize in the right hand corner and then looking for the import icon and just drag that to your toolbar so it's always there. Click done and now you can go ahead and just click the icon and import that way. So I'm going to go ahead and just import a few images to start out with. I'm just going to select first fill empty frames. Okay. Now you notice that I still have one empty frame left. I could go and import another one. Or if you just want to make it easier for yourself, you can just go ahead, bring up a finder window, and just simply drag the image right into the space. Most of the time, I just prefer to do it that way. Now, the way this application works is this if you want to resize, or reposition photos. You can just drag sliders like this and it looks like the photos are being distorted but once you let go then it straightens itself out. That's what I like about this application. It gives you a lot of flexibility that way. I and mean, you can just move things around however you want to make the available spaces that you want to have set up. And say for example you want to straighten out the proportion like on the bottom right here I want to reveal more of this image you press down the command key and then swipe left or right to resize that's how it's done so it's command and I'm using the trackpad so I'm pressing down on the command key then pressing down on the trackpad and then swiping left to right to resize Now, if you want to move things around from left to right, as opposed to just scaling them, press the space bar, press down on your trackpad, and then just move your items around that way. So space bar is for moving, command key is for resizing. And that's how that's done. Now, there's a lot of flexibility with this application, which is why I like it a lot. Yes, it doesn't have a ton of features, but the features it does offer, they work very well. So let me bring up my finder window again, just so I can illustrate some of the flexibility here. So let's just say, okay, I chose this template, but you know, I realize that this is not really the kind of template I want. I want to add another picture somewhere in here along the bottom. So I'm going to take this collage and I'm going to drag it over top. And you see I have the option to replace that image or if I move it over a bit, you can see it now sets another column up. And now I have two columns instead of one. And I prefer it that way. And now I can go in, use the command key, press down on my trackpad, and resize from left to right, and use my space bar to reposition and move around. And that's how that works. So you see there's a lot of flexibility in terms of how you can set up your images without being totally confined to the template that you have chosen. Another thing I really like is the ability to just simply get rid of an image, which is also another customizable feature. For example, let's just say I wanted to, well, let me bring up another image. I want to split the top frame as well. So I'm going to find me another collage. I'm going to drag it in. I'm going to create two. Now let's just say I want to get rid of something like this one on the bottom I don't really like this I just want one image down there instead of two you see that there is a red X that appears if I press on that red X it now eliminates that image and I can now work with the one image that I have by pressing down on the space bar and the trackpad 
and moving that image around. I love the flexibility. I think that's the best part about this application. Now here's what's fun. Check this out. You can also randomize your images by clicking the randomize button here in the top right and it just sends your images around to different locations. I love doing this. I think I can do this all day long. I, I love this option of randomizing the images. I don't know, for me it's just an awful lot of fun. You also have the option too of flipping things vertically and horizontally. So for example, if I select this first photo in the top left, I can click on horizontal and have it go back and forth or flip vertically. I love that option as well. And then you can have it turn left or right. So I love that option too. You can choose to have a frame or not have a frame. So here I've just deselected the frame and now all the images appear to meld into one. Or you can just select the frame to bring the frame back. And then with frame size, you can choose to control how wide you want the frame to be or how narrow you want it. And the color menu gives you the option to then modify the color. Of course, you can do that the usual way you do it with the presets on the Mac. I personally like to use the eyeglass symbol and then pull color that pre-exists inside my artwork and then add that to the border. So I love that feature. You can also go to new layout and reposition your collage that way. One thing I really like, and this is the best part, it's, it's almost like a hidden feature is that you can add themes to your collages as well. And that's what's really cool about this application. So I click on themes. And you see here, I have a wide range of themes to choose from. Standard, black and white standard, black and white strong contrast, 70s look. So I just say if I went with the 70s, use that theme. All of a sudden that theme is applied to the entire collage and now it has a more unified feel to it. I really love it. And you can just play around with all the different themes that are available. There are quite a number to choose from. There's sepia here, another sepia, glaring light, uh, black and white glaring light, Mediterranean afternoon, desert evening, and so forth. Try desert evening and see what that's like. Oh, that looks really cool. Let me try one more. It's a little different, maybe off the beaten path. Here's a uh, hard photo paper or quick quicksilver. Oh, that sounds kind of interesting. So this is quicksilver. You can always, of course, do Command Z to reverse what you've done. Again, doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles. For example, you can't import an image in the background. You can't add rounded edges to the collage. But I love the ease of use. And it really does closely resemble the feel of iOS, especially in terms of how you use the command key and space bar along with the trackpad to swipe and manipulate the size and position of your images. It feels like an iOS experience. Of course, applications for the Mac are going to be more than iOS because you're dealing with a larger screen real estate, an entirely different device. It's a computer. It's, it's not a tablet. So it's going to be different but I happen to like it. I encourage you to check it out. I think you will enjoy it too. It's CFX Collage and it's $19.99 in the App Store. Thanks for tuning in for an episode of My Apple Podcast. This is Tim Brown. Check me out next time.